the ancient black obelisk of Shalmaneser III verifying Anunnaki kingship, the invocation of the gods. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear League Project, how the heck are you? Thank you for joining me this quick update and edition. I'm pretty excited because when I did the research, I found two different translations of this ancient obelisk. And I am going to share with you the lineage that literally goes back to the Anunnaki gods. It's incredible. All right. So here we go. The invocation of the gods, titles and genealogy of the king, the ancient black obelisk and Shalmaneser III, literally verifying Anunnaki kingship. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. So let me share with you. Let's get started on the actual data. I want to share with you the obelisk here. You go to it right now. Okay. As you can see, this is about seven feet tall. And it, the very top here has Sumerian kings from the Anunnaki bloodlines that are pointing at the winged disc, which is, you, you will always see on new this central point, and then Enki and Enlil oftentimes flanking on new. Well, here you see uh, somebody in the center that's actually bowing. That is a Jewish king. And then you'll see the Sumerian kings to the left pointing upwards at Anu, the winged disc. You'll see it here also. And they're giving homage to Anu. There's thousands of tablets, thousands of them that depict this winged disc. And they're always pointing at it like that's, their, that's where they came from. You'll oftentimes see the Anunnaki depicted as giants over, over the humans, much larger it's very interesting. Now, let me make sure the audio is coming in here okay. Obelisk. Is that better? Obelisk. Did I say it right that time? Thank you. <laughs> I'm, English isn't my first language. So this right here is another image. This is from Wikipedia. You can see the details right here. It's incredible. This winged disc. And it looks as if there's almost a snake on each side there. I don't know if that's really necessarily the serpent knowledge or just the design, but that is incredible how it's got the star, the central point, and it's always what they're pointing at. The gods, the kings, they're always pointing at that specific object. So this right here is the translation. Now I'm going to share with you the actual translation. There's a couple of different translations. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do. I'm Like I said, English isn't my first language. Um, but anyway, if you can deal with the, the madness, if you can deal with me mispronouncing words, then hey, we're in good shape. Hopefully the data that I present will outweigh that. So this is from the world's greatest literature, the masterpieces of the world's greatest authors in history, biography, philosophy, economics, politics. So the editors... This is where it gets good. The editors, the library committee, Justin McCarthy, a historian and journalist, Timothy Dwight, ex-presidential, ex-president, Yale University, <laughs> Richard Henry Stoddard, the author and critic. Then you have Paul Van Dyke the, um, from Princeton University. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. Albert Ellery Burr. Managing Editor, the Advisory Committee, John T. Morgan, the United States Senate, Frederick R. Codert, LLD, New York Bar, Edward Everett Hell, author and editor, Maurice Francis Egan, Catholic University of America, and then Julian Hawthorne. So you got some big names here. Now, if I zoom out, we're going to go to page 236. It's where it gets interesting. The actual translation of this tablet. So, all right, five, six, here we go. The Black Obelisk, inscription of Shalmaneser II. See, here's, here's where I'm having an interesting, I think they got this wrong because it's Shalmaneser III. 
that's depicted, it's one and of the same. So we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. So this inscription is engraved in black marble. It says it's five feet in height, yet the obelisk of Shalmaneser III is seven feet tall. So they might have just gotten the, the measurements wrong. But the inscription is virtually the same. The translation. Now, here's what's interesting, though. They're missing out on some of the key players. Because when you read another translation, it talks about the Ajiji, Enlil, Enki, and Nana. And this one doesn't have all of those same players, yet it has the same, the same storyline. So the black obelisk of Shalmaneser. Hey, can you tell me how to say it correct again? I think I'm doing it wrong again. <laughs> uh, sir, the great Lord, the king of all, the great gods, Anu, king of the spirits of heaven, and the spirits of earth, the God, Lord of the world, Bel, the supreme father of the gods, the creator, he king of the deep, determiner of destinies, the king of crowns, drinking and brilliance, Rimen, the crowned hero, Lord of canals, the sun god, the judge of heaven and earth, the urger on of all. Merodach, prince of the gods, Lord of battles, Adar, the terrible, Lord of the spirits of heaven and the spirits of earth the exceeding strong God, Nergal. So we'll go to the next page here. This day, O God, distressed, I cry to thee. O goddess, be thou gracious unto me. Receive my prayer, my sins, forgive, I pray, my wickedness, and will array against thee. O pardon me, O God, be kind this day. Obelisk, thank you, obelisk. Nanny, nanny. Obelisk. All right. So check this out. Here it is again. Let's get into who Shalmaneser the first is. He was an Assyrian king, the empire of 1365, 1050 BC. Shalmaneser the second. The name literally means the God. The king of Assyria, 1030, 1019 BC, the 93rd to appear on the Assyrian king's list. Then we have Shalmaneser III, and this is in reference of this obelisk right now, what we're discussing. Very powerful. Um, obviously, you see the world, all four corners of the world, bowing to him and giving to him, sacrificing to him, offering homage to him as he offered, offers homage to Anu. Now, this is from the ancient records of Assyria and Babylonia. Daniel David Luckenbill, PhD. This is the historical records of Assyria. This is from Chicago University. Let's get into the translation here. This one I find much more fascinating because it has the names. And, and this proves right here, this proves right here that Zachariah Sitchin didn't make up the Anunnaki. So for anybody out there that says Zachariah Sitchin made up the Anunnaki, um, no, he didn't. The Anunnaki were not made up by Zachariah Sitchin. Now, your interpretation of the Anunnaki is, is totally up to you. But there has been plenty of people that have done translations before he was even born that have translated the Sumerian tablets to the Anunnaki. Now, let's talk about this one right here, the black, um, the inscription here. In the inscription of the famous, hold on a second. Dang it. It's been scrolling back, scrolling back. Will you just look at it? Obelisk, thank you. The black obelisk inscription. <laughs> In the inscription of the famous black obelisk of the British Museum, we are in possession of what was in all probability. I mean, could it, really, guys, could a Jesuit reptilian shapeshifter mispronounce words that bad? No. Okay? Just saying. So, the black obelisk of the British Museum, we are in possession of what was, and in all probability, the final edition of the annals of another Assyrian conqueror, namely 
Shalmaneser III, this black alabaster monolith came from the central building at Nimrud and is inscribed on its four sides with the record of the king's military achievements from the year of the session to the 31st year. In addition to the inscription, there are 20 small reliefs with annotations depicting the payment of the tribute of the five conquered regions. Now, this was published in Laylord's Inscriptions, plates 87F, and has been translated many times. The inscription on the fragment of a stone slab found in Kalat Shirkat seems to have been a duplicate of the obelisk inscription. This text, which breaks off at the end of the account of the campaign of the second year, is published in Ka 1, number 77. Now, here's where it gets good. Thank you for your patience. Now let's get to the good stuff. The invocation of the gods, the titles and genealogy of the king. Ah, sir, the great Lord, king of all the great gods, Anu, king of the Ajiji and Anunnaki. Remember, the Ajiji are the bird people. The Ajiji are the bird people. Humans are a combination of, according to the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Anunnaki genes and the Ajiji. One of the Ajiji sacrificed themselves or was sacrificed for their DNA that we are created from, or at least the Adam that was created originally. Now, Anu, king of the Ajiji and Anunnaki, the lord of lands, Enlil, Bel, the exalted, father of the gods, the creator, Ea, king of the deep, Abzu, who determines destiny, which is Enki, Sin, king of the Tiara, exalted in splendor, Adad, mighty, preeminent, lord of abundance, plenty, Shamash, judge of heaven and earth, director of all things, Marduk, master of the gods, lord of law, omens, Urta, valiant ruler of the Ajiji on, and the Anunnaki, the almighty god, Nergal, the ready, perfect king of battle, Nusku, bearer of the shining scepter, the god, who renders decisions, Ninlil, spouse of Bel, mother of the great gods, Ishtar, first in heaven and on earth, who fills full the measure of bravery, the great gods who ordain destiny, destinies who have made great my kingdom, I invoke. Shalmanazir, king of all peoples, lord priest of Asur, mighty king, king of all the four regions of the world, son of all peoples. Son of Asur, Nasir Paul, the high priest whose priesthood was acceptable to the gods and who brought in submission at his feet the totality of the countries of earth, glorious offspring of Tukliti or Ta, who slew all of his foes and overwhelmed them like a hurricane, deluge. The year of accession against the city of Eridu at the beginning of my reign, when I solemnly took my seat upon the royal throne, I mobilized my chariots and troops. The passes of the land of Semesi, I entered Eridu, the stronghold of Nini I captured. It's interesting because all the names are there. Enki, Enlil, Anu, and Nana. They're all there. Um, Marduk, Utu. Yet all of that is, is taken out of another translation. It's very interesting how they come up with the information and the translations. And some of, some of the scholars will be able to get so much more detail than others. I would also recommend checking out the cuneiform texts and Babylonian tablets in the British Museum, uh, 50 plates of cuneiform texts. This is pretty interesting. So let's go back. Let's take a look at this again. And the detail right here of this winged disc. For thousands of years, even, even if you get into the Egyptian hieroglyphics, you can get into the Rosicrucian stuff. The Rosicrucian symbol, one of their symbols is this right here. It's just a, it's outlined, it's the same outline, but internally it's a little bit different, but it's from the same, from the same sign. So I find this incredible. What do you guys think about all this information?
So yeah, this isn't a long podcast. I just wanted to share this with you guys real quick. Very interesting information. Check back later. Also tomorrow, I'm going to have Dr. Brooks Agnew on the show. This guy is awesome. He has a ton of information. Brilliant. We're going to talk about the hollow earth and that expedition that he almost took and the ice caps, the possibility of the ice caps covering these enormous entrances to the hollow earth, to the catacombs of the earth. Let me see if I can find something out of the uh, Egyptian book of the dead that I've got here that looks similar. All right. You know, when I started reading through the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian stuff, had some really bizarre dreams. Very, very bizarre dreams that I think were kind of related to um, to the, the information presented. So if you get time, look up the Rosicrucian order and look at the symbol that they use and look at how much it parallels this ancient Sumerian worshiping of Anu. Anu coming from this, you know, from the stars, from the heavens, the breakdown of the Anunnaki. It's fascinating information indeed. So be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see. From the Anunnaki bloodlines that are pointing at the winged disc, which is, you, you will always see Anu this central point, and then Enki and Enlil oftentimes flanking Anu. Well, here you see uh, somebody in the center that's actually bowing. That is a Jewish king. And then you'll see the Sumerian kings to the left pointing upwards at Anu, the winged disc. You'll see it here also. And they're giving homage to Anu. There's thousands of tablets. Thaki kingship the invocation of the gods ladies and gentlemen rex bear leak project how the heck are you thank you for joining me this quick update and edition i'm pretty excited because when i did the research i found two different translations of this ancient obelisk and i am going to share with you the lineage that literally goes back to the anunnaki gods it's incredible All right, so here we go. The thousands of them that depict this winged disc, and they're always pointing at it like that's, their, that's where they came from. You'll oftentimes see the Anunnaki depicted as giants over, over the humans, much larger. It's very interesting. Now, let me make sure the audio is coming in here okay. Obelisk, is that better? Obelisk, did I say it right that time? Thank you. <laughs> I'm, English isn't my first language. So this right here is another image. This is from Wikipedia. You can see the details right here. It's incredible. The ancient black obelisk of Shalmaneser III, verifying and invocation of the gods, titles, and genealogy of the king. The ancient black obelisk and Shalmaneser III, literally verifying Anunnaki kingship. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. So let me share with you. Let's get started on the actual data. I want to share with you the obelisk here. You go to it right now. Okay, as you can see, this is about seven feet tall. And it, the very top here has Sumerian kings 